And, uh, you know, I hope some of the other candidates are uh, committing to similar limits. Okay, next is Mr. O'Donnell, term limits. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to term limits. I think that's why we have elections. Um, I think that uh, term limits are kind of this artificial, arbitrary, uh, let's throw the bums out. And, uh, you know, you hear a lot in the federal government. I know it was a contract with America back when uh, Newt Gingrich was running, and it was the first thing the Republicans got rid of, and they were in there for 10 years and back again. So it's, it's one of those kind of gimmicks, I think, term limits. That's why we have elections. I think we're all empowered. We can throw the bums out, can't we? Um, but with that said, I think that we need uh, uh, to be uh, accountable to our constituents. We need to have uh, an ongoing dialogue, maybe recall. I've always supported recall uh, movements. Um, certainly we've gone through it with our governor. So let's think about that as something that we can use as a tool if someone is really uh, not representing us. But I really believe that uh, we should uh, hold our public servants to the fire and we should get out and vote. And I think by this uh, crowd, I think we're going to have a big turnout uh, okay. this February 27th. So you leave term limits in the hands of the voters? I believe in okay. voters. Uh, Mr. Pivar. So I fundamentally disagree with Mr. O'Donnell. Um, two terms. Uh, I believe in term limits for the mayors. The key issue is people run out of good ideas. There's a reason why corporations and universities and other organizations change leadership. It's because you need to have change. Um, when, you're, when you sit in office for more than two terms, if you sit in office for 35, 36 years, eventually you run out of good ideas, you get entrenched, and you can't think outside the box. Um, we need to hold our legislators, legislators accountable, and yes, elections is one way to do that. But you know what makes it hard to run against uh, you know, run in the city of Chicago is when you're running up against a guy who's got eight hundred thousand dollars in in the bank. You know, and that does that didn't happen overnight. That happened by taking money from special interests, from beer companies, from people doing business in our TIF districts. If you really want to have good governance, hold people accountable and give them two terms, and then it's your turn. This is our government. It shouldn't. It's not mine. It's not Alderman Schultz's. It's not Mr. O'Donnell's or the other candidates. It's ours, and everyone should have a chance to run for office. And to that end, two terms is the right thing. Thank you. Mr. Jacks. So I, I strongly support term limits. I, I feel that, you know, as was brought up before, I feel that incumbents have an inherent advantage. They have, you know, a, a you know, large campaign fund. They have a lot of interest groups that they're tied to. They have, obviously, the name recognition that comes with that. And it's, and, and with that support, you know, they, they are able actually to, in, in a lot of cases, to, to kick a lot of their challengers off the ballot as well. Um, this, in this current election, over 100 candidates have either withdrawn or been kicked off the ballot. I know we have you know, one in this ward, but that's a very rare case. And you know, why does that happen? Well, because the incumbents know the process, they have the money, and they're able to you know, remove competition. So I feel that term limits balance out that competition. And you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if, if there is you know, a very good candidate, that person can always, after one term, come back and run again. And if the voters want to, they can re-elect them. Okay, thank you. Well, we're gonna go to our last question of the evening before we do the closing statements. Uh, question number two. Okay, here's a broad uh, question. What is your environmental plan for the 47th Ward should you be elected? Please feel free to be as specific as possible. Uh, Mr. Jacks, we'll start with you, and then Mr. Pawar, O'Donnell, and Mr. Reichel. Great. Um, I, I love the environment. I've, I've been working um, as an environmental policy and research analyst over the past uh, two years, and I think you know there's a great Chicago Climate Action Plan. I feel that this, this ward um, could become really engaged and hopefully be a ward leader in the city's movement to um, you know, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, among other things. I feel that there's three big areas of focus. Uh, one, recycling, two, transportation, and three, energy efficiency. So recycling, I feel, is really important because it's one of those actions that you know, gets people involved, and once they start recycling, they become stronger environmental stewards. Uh, with transportation, you know, we have a lot of transportation um, access, so I feel like we need to improve transit-oriented development, uh, improve business engagement with bus tracker, improve you know, bike lanes, um, pedestrian-scale communities, and um, with, with energy efficiency, lastly, I feel that that's something that you know, all, um, you know, all people, I, 
everybody can get involved because you can save you know, energy um, and reduce your energy bill with energy efficiency improvements. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pilar. Uh, my, my, my plan revolves around 1A, running a, a clean, a green office at the aldermanic level. You know, we want to leverage technology. One of the things that I've done um, with this campaign is create uh, Chicago Works as an iPhone app that's available for free. It allows you to make service requests. It removes some of that, some of those layers of bureaucracy that cost us money, some paper, some resources. Um, one of the things, one of the other things that I'd like to be able to do is connect mass transit to affordable housing. We need to create more supportive mechanisms so that we can educate our residents about um, reducing electric use during peak periods and use more supportive rate structures. We need to retrofit older buildings. Uh, there are some incentive programs, and I agree, we have to. Um, adhere to the Chicago Climate Action Plan and reduce our emissions by 25%. And, you know, one of the other things, I've, I've went door to door along the river and there's a great group over there that's working to restore the river bank. What I'd like to also do is work with um, our partners or other community organizations that are also upstream and downstream and work with them to um, improve the river bank. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the iPhone app. Is that something that's in existence or is it an idea of yours? Oh, it's in existence. You can download it. It's okay. free. It's All called right. Chicago Works. It's in iTunes. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell. I don't have that, no. Uh, 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 there needs to be a comprehensive plan to overhaul the approach the city has taken to environmental issues. Uh, and green isn't just about the environment, it's about a strong economy for the war and the city's future. First thing we have to remember is that there is no single answer. We need to explore hydrogen, biodiesel, geothermal, kinetic, solar, and all other options. We need to implement uh, new green initiatives uh, like more hybrid buses on our streets, planting annuals and trees in our streets and using zoning laws to allow community gardens to be built in our communities. It will all help beautify our city and stabilize the falling property values and create new jobs. We have a, a Ravenswood Industrial Corridor, Addison Ravenswood Industrial Corridor. I want those to be green collar jobs and I'll push to get uh, all the uh, funding and monies that are going toward that economy and try and push to get people here, uh, even with the corporate tax and all the other hurdles we have, but let's go for a green economy. Thank you. Okay, and finally, Mr. Reichel. Thank you. Well, I'm very proud to be the officially endorsed Green Party candidate in this race, and uh, uh, the Green Party only endorsed two candidates, myself and uh, Alderman Joe Moore up in the 49th Ward. And if elected, I will be working with him to get that clean coal ordinance passed. Uh, just another progressive measure where we need more leadership there in the city council, uh, people ready to come in as activists and fight to get those, uh, the, the remaining uh, old coal plants closed down on the uh, south side. Also be the public, or the, uh, the public transportation alderman. Uh, I'll fight to bring uh, hire back uh, every job lost over the last five years because, you know, when you have budget shortfalls, across the board at all levels of government, you shouldn't be cutting jobs. When people are working, they're paying back into the system in the form of taxes. Uh, they're buying into the, uh, the market because they have money to do so, to go out there and buy things and be good consumers. So we need to get those jobs back and uh, also push forward with the uh, ambitious expansion of public transportation. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Now we're going to move on to the uh, closing statements where each candidate will have uh, two minutes, as we said before, can use this to uh, wrap up any loose ends of questions we've already asked, uh, and also to make your final appeal here to this wonderful crowd. So we will draw the order. And Mr. Pewar, we'll start. I wanted to close by just saying, again, it's been an honor to be able to address uh, you know, the residents of the ward. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, what I wanted to say, this next election, you know, you have a choice. For the first time in a generation, you get to choose your alderman, really choose your alderman. And make no mistake that we have a financial crisis. If we weren't in crisis, we wouldn't have sold off our parking meters. If we weren't in crisis, we wouldn't keep turning to you for uh, property taxes, additional taxes. We wouldn't keep fining you. We wouldn't be putting in more red light cameras or raising fees. It, times are tough, and I think what we need to do is take stock of how we do things. We need to look at the expense side of the budget first before we turn to you for any additional uh, revenue. 